We pick up on the timeless adventure. You meet Lucy Preston, and she's a teacher, a historian, living in her mother's shadow, who is a very, very famous historian named Carol Preston. She's got a sister named Amy, but her mother's very sick with cancer. And then all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door, and Homeland Security shows up and says, Lucy Preston, come with us. And all of a sudden, she's whisked away to Connor Mason Industries, where she finds out that time travel is real, and she's introduced to... Uh, a military fella named Wyatt Logan, and they immediately don't like each other. And they learn together that they have been commissioned to go on this adventure because this terrorist named Garcia Flynn is, uh, has stolen the time machine and is going to wreak havoc on history, and they need this military girl, I mean this military guy and this historian to go along with the scientist who knows how to pilot the lifeboat Rufus and the three of them who have never time traveled and um, <laughs> really don't know what they're doing but are, are whisked into this adventure and we go back to figure out why the Hindenburg has not crashed. Um, and that really is wh where we leap into the story and what you find out through Timeless is every week we go and follow this evil organization named Rittenhouse to see why they are trying to change time or not change time or preserve history or, or change history. And we think that Flynn is our bad guy through season one because he keeps saying Rittenhouse, he's after Rittenhouse, so we're after him, so we're all after Rittenhouse. Um, and then by the end of season one, we, we find out that Flynn is actually, we actually have the same bad guy that we're all fighting together. And then we pick up on season two. And season two is really where we get to the nitty gritty of trying to stop Rittenhouse from bending all of history to their will. They have this, you know, mindset of their perfect present, and so they're going back in time to try and change all these events to preserve what they think is this pretty whitewashed, you know, very, um, uh, you know, their idea of this utopian, which is basically keeping anyone who is different away. Um, and I love the metaphor of that. And so here we are, we, we get to the end of um, season two, and basically what's happened through the adventure of time travel is that we get to shine a light on all of these incredible historical moments in time. I love season two because we really focused on all the female and minority stories. And really at the end of the day, it's about a family. You know, Wyatt and Lucy and Rufus become a family there's Gia, who is kind of the stay-at-home techie, and she progresses up and becomes a time traveler as well. We have Connor, we have Agent Christopher, who are kind of the mom and dad of the group, and they're back at home kind of preserving the missions. Mason gets to go on an adventure. So really, by the time where we get to season two, we're so invested in the characters, um, and their relationships are the one that ulti their relationships are the ones that are ultimately at stake. And what you learn about Lucy is that, her mother is actually like the head of the Rittenhouse organization who is also working for her grandfather who they had to go back. And so it's all in Lucy's blood. I mean, it is a very um, kind of tricky uh, you know, Rubik's Cube of relationship really starting with Lucy's family. And she's the one that's going to have to stop her family business. Um, so that's kind of where we... There's, there, I mean, there's so many ins and outs, but um, it's a time travel whodunit of the week and, um, and then ultimately a, a family drama. But is it the finale? I mean, let's get real here. We've been canceled twice and brought back from the dead twice. Our <laughs> real lives are mirroring the show. Somehow we keep changing history. I mean, literally, I went to bed one night with a canceled show and woke up to an uncanceled show. I mean, I woke up this morning and wasn't beat to poop. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, I'm beat to poop. So there you go. That's the show in a nutshell. <laughs> no, um, yes and no. But um, at, we are in the middle of shooting our finale, like you said. And uh, at the end, you know, the big season cliffhanger and someone to really mention is we, you know, there has been an uh, evil ne'er-do-well that's more evil than all of them, and it's Emma, who's kind of who we met in season one, and she's been the growing, like, you know, really evil uh, villain, and um, Emma and Lucy have a big showdown, and Emma 
beats Lucy to poop. And <laughs> every time you say poop, I have you go, Burr, you know. And, um, and so that's where we pick up is we pick up right where we left off. And I mean, poor Lucy. Let's talk about Lucy for a second. So at the end of season two, she find her mother is killed. Her grandfather is killed. Um, Wyatt didn't choose her. He chose his wife, who basically came back to life, which we understand. But then he decides, I should have chosen you, and I love you, after she kind of started to give up hope. And now she's got feelings for Flynn, who's kind a bad guy but kind of not a bad guy and he is about to confess his undying love for her as well and she also got beat up within an inch of her life so that's where we pick up with Lucy and the finale so things are looking up <laughs> it can only go up from here guys so yes, we're in the middle of shooting the finale, and so these are the leftover wounds from the Emma Lucy, the Emma, the Lucy versus Emma greatest showdown. Well, it's so interesting because Malcolm wrapped last night, and I just burst into tears. Like I, I mean, so much of our characters have mirrored our experience because we didn't know each other at all when we got, when we got cast, and here we are. We're sent to a, you know, another town, another country to shoot the pilot, then the pilot gets picked up, and then here we are kind of thrust in the adventure together. And I, I would say that Matt and Malcolm and I have been the perfect compadres for each other. I mean, they're brothers to me, and we delight in each other's uniqueness. I mean, we could not be more different from each other, and somehow it all works, and we have tremendous respect for each other's craft and also for each other's sensibilities because our sensibilities are all different, but somehow together they create like a, you know this kind of perfect trifecta, and um, it's been really great. Because one of my favorite movies is The Three Amigos, so it's like I feel like I've had to, I mean I feel like I've gotten to kind of have my own Three Amigos adventure through shooting the show, and I mean, we have so many inside jokes that nobody will be interested in. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you will find when you come to set, it, it is um, it is just uh, usually it's us just laughing ourselves silly and then action and you know being very serious about time travel. So um, I'm just very grateful that it was them. And um, I mean, there's too many to count, but like I would say the the moment that sticks out is we didn't know each other, we were shooting our first scene together, we're in Vancouver, we're at an airfield, there's all these gorgeous, you know, historical, I mean, just perfect planes, um, these aircrafts, you know, they built part of the Hindenburg out there, and, and we're shooting our first scene together, and all of a sudden, it was like we had to go, oh, it was the first time that we did our bit around um, where we made up names of people in the present and went undercover as people in the present. Um, and uh, <laughs> and so right before that, we all turned to, do, turned to each other, and I went, moment before, and we like jumped and did a thing, and we all did the same thing, and I was like, mm, I think this is going to work out. So it was like, we just had a chemistry, and we were all so excited to be there, and we just believe in the show. I mean, the show is putting good out in the world and educating people about our past, and we were educated through the show, um, I think particularly for Lucy. I mean, I'm, I literally give a history lesson every single episode. So I have learned quite a bit about history. You know, it, it's interesting because I have three, like three episodes, like if I, if, but for different reasons that I would kind of point people towards if you were like, what's timeless, you know? And I'd be like, well, if you wanna get like the full spectrum of the show, watch Bonnie and Clyde. It's got the romance, you have the personal effect of those characters, you really felt like you knew them. And also just the way, everyone had their own adventure too, and the way that the show looked, I just thought it was like the best of Timeless, you know, the dramatic, comedic moments, but really like, you felt like you were there. I'd say start there, but if you want like the fun, like just the all out fun of the show, watch the Hollywood Land episode, um, that is a delight, it's just, so funny, Malcolm's so funny, Matt, there's so much romance, it's where Lucy and Wyatt really, after like 1,700 episodes, finally like have a moment. Um, I, you know, a personal thing, Matt Whitney, who wrote the episode, they had kind of built in that Lucy was a singer, so she gets thrust on stage because they're the music, you know, they're like the next big musical act and, um, and Wyatt won't go up, so he pushes her on stage and there's just so much like comedy and musical comedy, which I love, and 
the early 40s is one of my favorite time periods. So I would say like that's a great follow up for the fun. And then I would say for the kind of the really important, um, the activism of the show, I would, you know, point people towards our suffragette episode where you learn about Alice Paul and Grace Humiston and two of our really like bombastic female figures that people don't know a lot about and are so significant. You know, now, you know, we just went through a big vote and 2020 is going to be our, our centennial of women being able to vote. And that's really the birthplace of that story. And it was just so impactful. We were at Paramount Studios and have hundreds of women dressed in the, you know, 1918 garb and wearing suffragettes banners and holding like, Mr. President, you know, like it was unbelievable. And we just had the Women's March. And I thought, I think it's just so reflective of really to look back and see how far we've come and how much further we have to go and visit our grandmothers of history who are who have really paved the way. So those are kind of my three go-to episodes. Thanks. Our fans, I mean, I guess I've been acting for a very long time, and I say this over and over again, is I keep with, particularly with Timeless, having this experience where I'm like, I've never seen this before. I've never felt this before. And, um, and I'm so curious about what it is, about why this show really just hooks into people's hearts. And I think there's an educational tool, but at the end of the day, nobody cares about anything if they don't care about the characters. So I think people really project themselves on to Lucy, Wyatt, and Rufus, and you know, our other kind of supporting, supporting you know, roles. And um, I think people are really hungry to learn about you know, what came before and how do we change our future. And we're also dealing with these themes of fate versus free will. So I think it's like we're constantly, every day we wake up, like, well, if I, you know, if I chose this, but if I didn't do this, like, what would happen? And we get to explore that on the show. So I think that has kind of hooked in this fan base that has just become so impassioned. And, you know, to be at the forefront of something that people love so much is overwhelming. I feel very humbled. Um, I feel very grateful that everywhere I go, there's goodwill and favor because I travel quite a bit and family stop me, teachers stop me, young, old, I get stopped by an eight-year-old, I get stopped by an 80-year-old, and it's really funny to take pictures with lots of 80-year-olds, too. <laughs> it's just like, hey, guys. Um, <clears throat> I get to go to D.C. because the Smithsonian um, has been a, a huge supporter. I got to go to the National Women's Party Museum and to the First Feminist Library because of the suffragette episode and what we have done for spreading you know, more um, interest in history. Um, it's been overwhelming and, and you know, just, just grateful to the fans that they're putting their money, their energy, their time. I mean, I, you know, I just have never been a part of something like that. And so this two hour finale is for the fans. I mean, they brought us back from the dead again. And, um, you know, so all of this is for them and hopefully it's very satisfying and unsatisfying at the same time as all. Again, you know, it's, it's, I hope that's satisfying and unsatisfying in the way that all good endings are. <laughs>